Some big news tonight regarding Jason Day and whether or not we'll see the world number one tee it up at the Tour Championship. And the United States Ryder Cup team isn't waiting till next week to get his first look at Hazel team. Find out who teed it up alongside Captain Love today, including some players not yet on the roster. Plus, who will Captain Love choose as his final captain's pick on Sunday? We play a game of make your case for some of the top candidates. And the PGA Tour is getting a full serving of beef next season. You'll hear from one of the most entertaining golfers alive coming up on Golf Central. Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. The last we saw of Jason Day was pulling out of the BMW Championship during the final round. Day made it through eight holes that Sunday before having to withdraw a crooked stick because of a back injury, leaving his status for the Tour Championship up in the air. But you'd have to think the bye week came at the perfect time for the three-time winner so far this season. Thanks for joining us tonight on Golf Central. I'm George Savarikas. So will Day tee it up at East Lake? For that, let's go out to Atlanta where Todd Lewis is covering this week's Tour Championship. Todd joins us now on the phone. Todd, what's the latest with Day? Well, as you mentioned, Jason pulled out of the BMW Championship on the final day, and he did so. He did feel some pain in his back, but primarily it was because he didn't want to cause any further damage as he looked ahead towards the Tour Championship, but he did leave some questions in the minds of media members and officials and even himself whether or not he could tee it up at the Tour Championship this week. But after resting, getting some treatment, he plans on playing the Tour Championship. He will arrive in Atlanta tomorrow to get ready for the final event of the season he said he and his camp are cautiously optimistic about his health so he is going to try to give it a go here in the final event of the season todd you, you could also look at this as saying why isn't he just taking this last week off to make sure that he's healthy going into next season what does the tour championship mean to him well it means a lot to him he already is a world golf champion he is a major champion but he's not a FedEx Cup champion. And if you look at the list of FedEx Cup champions, some who's who in the name of golf. And he would like to add his name to that list. Now, what he's going to have to do is manage his mind and his body this upcoming week. He's going to have to find trust in that back once again. He probably will be under some kind of ball count as far as how many he can hit on the driving range or not, depending on how he's feeling. Um, but more importantly, he's going to have to, remain in the right frame of mind now if he needs some positive feedback all he needs to do is go back and look at the, how he performed at the wgc dell match play he was battling a back injury there as well but he was able to gut it out manage himself appropriately both physically and mentally to go on and win that wgc event so i think he's going to be okay uh, as long as his back doesn't give him too much uh, of a problem. So I, I think uh, you know, he'll be able to perform at least close to the highest level that we expect from Jason Day. Well, definitely be something to watch for this week at the Tour Championship. Todd, appreciate it. You got it. Now flanked by Golf Channel analysts Trip Eisenhower and Billy Kratzer. Guys, a storyline that we've heard before with Jason Day. He's battled a lot of injuries from time to time. He's won before with a bulky back mm -hmm. at the WGC Dell match play. What do you expect out of Day this week? Uh, we'll see. I mean, it, it could be hit or miss. Uh, dealing with backs is very tricky. It's touchy. It's uh, hit or miss. Uh, I'm sure that the week off, as Todd mentioned, was, was wonderful for him and, and getting the back uh, back where he wants it. But one thing you can count on with Jason Day is uh, his performance on the greens. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, he is outperforming uh, the PGA Tour by miles in a lot of different categories. Um, we'll see how much he can practice. He doesn't need much practice on the greens, Billy, but uh, I expect Jason Day, uh, Eastlake's a wonderful fit for him, and when you're making the kind of putts he makes in particular outside of, of 10 feet, uh, I think he's going to be formidable, but it's good to see him at least give it a chance and have a chance to win this FedEx Cup. Right, I agree, Tripp. And, and I think physically, I think he's going to be okay because he has battled this. And, in fact, he battled it last year when he won at Barclays uh, up in Plainfield, New Jersey. So uh, he understands what he can do, what he can't do as far as his back is concerned. But what I admire most about Jason Day is his attitude and his mental strength. I think his mental strength will overcome the physical physical ailments that he has right now. And as you pointed out, if he hits it just good enough, mm -hmm. just good enough, mm -hmm. his putter can carry him. His short game is just marvelous. It's the best on the PGA Tour. So if he can just go a little bit, 
I think he's going to be a factor. And, and let's not forget, too, George, uh, there's a player of the year uh, race here that's very interesting. Three wins with well, DJ well, and Jason Day. So that's over. We'll, we'll see. Well, that, yeah, it probably over. is. It probably is. <laughs> but he could make well, a compelling okay, argument. Okay. He could make at least there's something you. to talk yeah, about, absolutely. even though we all kind of think it's going to end up being Dustin Johnson. Probably so. Speaking of being in a good spot, these are the five guys who are guaranteed to win the FedEx Cup playoffs with a win at the Tour Championship. Remember, the points are reset for the final event, so Dustin Johnson is in that top spot with Paul Casey at number five. Amazingly, without a win so far this season on the PGA Tour, but with a couple very well-timed runner-up finishes in the last two FedEx Cup playoff events. So who among the top five are you given the nod as the favorite to win the Tour Championship, Billy? I'm going to go with Adam Scott. You look at what he's done in the playoffs. He's had three top fives. Uh, you look at what he does tee to green. Uh, he's a marvelous ball striker. Uh, you look at the approach. Uh, he's leading in both categories. And all he needs to do is tidy up the putting just a little bit. And there are only 29 other players in this field that he's going to have to beat. But this is what happened at the BMW Championship. Consistently, the short miss. And again, you just cannot do that against these world-class players. But again, I go to the, to the fact that he's won on this golf course before. He won in, 26, in 2006. So the familiarity that he has with the golf course, the confidence that he has with the golf course, and the way that he's striking the ball trip, I think makes a pretty good case that if he puts just a lick, he's going to be there on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there, there's no kind of, uh, you can make a compelling argument for all five of these players, but you know what? Tiger Woods is the only number one seed uh, to win this back in 2009 to come in number one. So I'm going to say that that trend kind of continues, that not number one does it as much as I do like DJ's game. I'm going with Paul Casey. Uh, Paul Casey has played East Lake twice in his career, and he's played it fantastic. In fact, he's had two top five finishes. You look at what he's doing this season on the PGA Tour. He's second in greens and regulation. He's coming off back-to-back second-place finishes. And here he is at East Lake. If he strays from the fairway, who cares? He's got the great iron play, and it is in flight right now. Uh, the other thing that you really have to like about his game is he's second in scrambling in the playoffs, or excuse me, first in scrambling in the playoffs. And that is so important at Eastlake because these greens can be tricky to get the ball up and down in particular if you short side yourself. Well, Paul Casey's short game is in flight as well. I think he's going to be the guy that comes from the fifth spot and ends up winning this just like Brant Snedeker did in 2012. You can see right here, most rounds inside the top five. Well, he's right up there with eight of them. And again, fifth last year, he likes Eastlake. He's sitting in fifth. I think he could walk away with the $10 million. That'd be a heck of a story considering where be. he was prior to the start of the FedEx Cup playoffs. If he could peel together, not quite what Billy Horschel did, where he had a runner-up and two wins, but to have two runner-ups going into the Tour Championship, obviously on a very good trend. Mm -hmm. No question. <laughs> and he's just one of 30 players who have a shot at the title of FedEx Cup champion and the biggest prize in golf. Our coverage of the Tour Championship begins Thursday at 1 o'clock on Golf Channel and continuing Saturday noon Eastern over on NBC. We're just getting going here tonight on Golf Central. The U.S. team doing a little recon today at Hazeltine. We'll have the latest. Plus, we're crunching the numbers and showing you the different scenarios for some of golf's biggest names to capture golf's biggest prize. And it's our LPGA Major Season in Review. Some of the highlights later on the show. Golf Central is brought to you by the Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X make a difference in your game. Arcos, advanced GPS and distance tracking for every shot.